Hey guys, I'm back. So I, um, I'm doing part two now. Um, this is still drying, still has some glue that needs to be um, dried out. Uh, I'm gonna do another spread. I'm gonna start doing um, beyond the, um, the fold out page here. But uh, one thing I was thinking about is when we do the fold out, um, I really feel like the fold out itself should have a similar type situation, but the fold out is gonna include the first page, like the cover of our little envelope journal here. Um, so I wanna think about what my outside is gonna be. Um, and I think because this is close to the other page that she sent, I may use this as my outside. Um, because I think it matches better. And then I may use some things like this for tucks and for pockets. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting the this uh, 12 by 12 paper. I hope I can get four pieces out of it. I'm not sure that I can, um, and there are no real pockets. I could use this as a pocket, I guess. Um, no, actually that's glued down. So there are no pockets on the outside here. So it might be a little interesting. I might have to think about um, when this is folded up, this is what, it's gonna be this side and this side that shows. So those two sides may be different and then the inside folding out might, might be two different pieces, um, two pieces that are co cohesive with this um, because this would be a spread if you just opened it up. Um, so I'm thinking that this piece and this piece will have this paper and then maybe the front and the, the back will have a different theme. So, um, in order to not get confused, I may have to, um, I may actually even just mark with a pencil or a pen, uh, back, front, so I know not to use those. <laughs> and then I'm gonna cut my paper. Um, I do have an envelope that I can use as a, a reminder here of how big my measurements are. So it's six and, right now it looks like six and a half. I thought it was six and three eighths um, by three and three quarters. So, Six and a half, is that right? Six and a half? Yep, yeah, six and a half by three quarter, uh, three and three quarters. So let's do the six and a half. Actually, I'm do it this way. Okay. And then our three and three quarters. when I cut, <laughs> especially if I've measured it because I'm terrible at measuring. So that is the same size. I may want to cut this down a little bit. Um, three and three quarters, I might make it three, a uh, little less than three quarters, maybe three and five eighths. I think that's what I did last time. Does that work better? That works much better. Okay, so let me do that. Three and five eighths is what I want. Hopefully this actually cuts it without being a problem. Mm. Nope, it's not going to. Three and five eighths. My cutter is really picky whenever I do just a small piece. Um, so it, it gets, it gets frustrated when I try to do a small piece. Um, so I'll probably just have to mark it on the back here and cut it with my scissors. Um, whenever that happens, I'm gonna just kind of try to get right up to the edge without it being um, on the edge. And then I will 
use the ink to darken that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna mark where I want to cut off. And I'll use my scissors to cut that off. Because it wants to be complicated. Okay. And I believe I only need two pieces that size. Um, so I'm going to stop with the cutting for that. And I am going to use my big scissors to cut that as straight as I can. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and glue these down if they are the right size. Let me make sure that they are. Yep, they look good. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue them down. And now I need to think about what I want on the outside of this journal. Um, I don't know that I want it to be the neutral color because I have so much um, that's going to be the neutral color. So maybe I should go with one of the colored um, papers that's in the pack. I'm thinking that that pink um, with the pretty doily background and the flowers would be pretty, although that doesn't necessarily, the doily does, but it doesn't necessarily say sewing. Um, so I might pick something that's more obviously sewing, sewing themed, sewing related. Okay, and when I fold, that's what it's gonna look like. It's gonna look pretty uniform. So that's good. I am going to brayer that. So it spreads that glue out. Okay, and then what do I want? I want to look at my paper choices here. So I have, this I think would be good for pockets. This is really pretty actually. It's got a dress form. That might be pretty on the outside. Um, and then this has a sewing machine on it, um, but I think that'd be pretty as a spread. This was the one that I was talking about. It has kind of a doily and it does have the measuring tape on it, which is very sewing related. Um, oh gosh, this is hard because I really like both of those, but I think I'm gonna do this dress form. I really like the dress form. I think it's gonna be a beautiful cover for this. So, Let's see, how can I get the dress form? And the dress form is gonna be a little too tall for the cover, so I'm gonna do definitely the top here. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut those. And I need to remind myself, I'm sorry, I probably should have wrote these down. You would think I would have figured that out by now. Um, we said six and a half, so we're gonna do six and three eighths by um, three and five eighths. So this is six. and three-eighths. Man, that does cut that dress form, doesn't it? I hate that it's cutting the dress form so much. But I could always use that as a pocket, too. Six, and then we have three, and three-eighths, or three and five-eighths. Which was it? I've got three and five-eighths. I 
have terrible short-term memory, have you noticed? <laughs> and then I guess this side would be better to do the other side. Three and five eighths. Does anybody else have trouble doing <laughs> the, the trimming and stuff? I feel like I am going back to grade school. That's bad to admit as a teacher, isn't it? Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the front and the back. And that's the perfect size for that, it really is. Um, and then on the front, I'm definitely gonna add more embellishment. I'm gonna, um, that's another reason I liked this pattern because it has some room for me to do some things to it. Some ribbon or something, and I really, I should have thought about it. I could have put ribbon underneath um, the cover to tie it. But of course, I think after the fact, but there was no real ribbon. It was mostly just um, crochet that was involved. So I didn't, well, no, I did have ribbon. I had this yellow ribbon. This is seam binding. And I did have this lace, which could have worked, but I think I'm gonna use that as an edging. So I'm gonna do this. Okay. And again, I'm just trying to think of what this is gonna look like when it's closed. Um, to determine I wanted the flowers on the edging of the book. So. I'm gonna brayer the heck out of it and get all of my glue that has been spilled. Okay, and so when it's closed, it's gonna look like this. And I may add some um, I'm gonna ink the edges, of course. I may add some sort of floral or something, um, some sort of ribbon to the edge. I'm probably gonna add some of the lace too. And now I have just these two or three spreads here. Um, so I guess that should be the first thing that we take care of is the spreads. Um, okay, so as far as the cover, this is really cute. I definitely am going to be um, trying to look for things to embellish. I could add this little sticker here um, to embellish the front, and I might have some sort of title or something like that up top, but I have room to do some things, so that's good. Um, now, on my second little spread here, um, I have more paper. I have a piece of paper here I could use. And keep in mind if you're adding like, I know um, with this last page here where I cut it too short, um, you can't really see it that much anymore, but I can add a pocket here to cover that. So I'm not so worried about um, whether or not it's all the same pattern there. Some of this I can plan strategically to cover. Um, I do have this sewing machine and I'm going to cut that. And I know this is probably super boring for you <laughs> because you're watching me cut paper. Um, if I can figure out how to speed some of this up, I will try to do that for you. Um, okay, so we have the... I'm do it this way because I need this to be intact. Six and three eighths. And then I have three and five eighths. And just double checking that that fits. And it does, yay. Okay. And then three 
and five eighths. I'm going to go ahead and cut another one. Okay. okay, so I have this. I probably will not want to cover this sewing machine. I probably will want that to be intact. So I think I'm going to put it on a side without a pocket. And I'm probably not gonna utilize all of the, the pockets from the envelopes. I'm probably gonna make my own pockets because I have plenty of materials to do that with. Um, and also, you know, I just, I want to be able to cover these quickly. I don't want this to be a lengthy process. So, I might actually not use this first pocket my cover instead. Okay. And this is cute because it has the little scissors and it's it's um it's going to match up. So I'm going to go ahead and glue it down as well and make sure my pocket's glued. Down. Cuz I did not do that initially. Remember I didn't glue my pockets, I just glued into my pockets. So the bottom is actually the flap of the next um, envelope. And again, I think I've, I've said this a couple of times now, but if you guys want me to do another like video tutorial of how to create these envelope journals, there's so many different things that you can do with them and so many other ways to create pockets um, without having to, to create them out of the paper that you're using. Um, but like I said, because this is a special theme, I wanted to um, make everything with these particular um, papers. So now I have that spread. This would ordinarily be closed because it's not part of the spread, but very cute and I can add decoration to it in a minute. Um, I do have some paper left over here, so I think I might use that to cover instead of cutting a whole new paper just for that. Um, this will be one that I probably do a lot of decorating on anyway. Does this fit? It does. So, instead of measuring, I'm going to Cut it like this. We take shortcuts where we can get them, right? <laughs> and the great thing is I just cut these strips here. These can be belly bands. They can be little tuck spots, so I'm not wasting that, that material. Um, yeah, I think I will do it that way and I think again I'm gonna glue these pockets closed I don't think I'm gonna use them I'm gonna create my own pockets on most of these pages I did have that one pocket in the fold in page that's already using the um, the envelope so I'm just not gonna worry about it and theoretically I could do that with this one as well. Hmm. I might do it with this one as well. A lot. I think I might keep this intact because it's just a perfect pocket. Um, and then I might just cover this. Okay. Let me see. So this one was a little bit big. I'm going to go ahead and cut this with my scissors because this was one that I could not trim with my cutter just now or earlier in the, the other video. 
Um, so I am going to cut it with my scissors and then I don't have to cut any more of my papers. I can utilize those for something else or I can use them as pockets. This is the last page that I'm having to do like this. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. Kind of like how I wrapped this around the back side and tucked it. It's kind of um, taken this white edge and, and created a, um, a prettier edge for this journal. So I'm gonna do that with this other pocket since I wanna keep this pocket intact now because I change my mind all the time. Um, I'm gonna grab some more of that paper. It's gonna all be in this box. I'm trying to find paper that has some sort of text on it if possible. It looks like most, here we go. So I am going to Take one piece of this. I want to find something that has some interesting stuff to it. So, yeah. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use my matte medium again. work my way over I'm doing a section at a time Okay, so that is done. And then what I'm gonna do, sometimes, <laughs> Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off. Fold it over here. I am gonna map medium this down as well. So that I don't have to worry about neat edges. Since I'm covering it anyway, it doesn't matter if we fold it over. Nobody's gonna see that. And then for this, I will wait until it's dry to mess with it anymore. Just to make sure I don't mess it up. 
Okay. And then this, I can go ahead and glue down on the back. Just got a big, big glop right there. I have a feeling that's going to be messy. Okay. There we go. Okay, so we have put those upside down and I did so I'll be hiding that page <laughs> um, but okay so our front and then our first spread second spread with the little pocket that I need to trim third spread with the upside down page I might be able to pull off and I can so I'm going to, while it's wet, I don't know how I didn't manage to see that because the other page was the right way. There we go. But we can hide it anyway. Not a big deal. If that happens to you, just use it as a background, stamp over it, do whatever you gotta do. We're junk journalers. We we do what we got to. So, uh, second spread, third spread. Yep, third spread. Fourth spread with the fold out. And I think it's super cute so far. Okay, so let's start adding some, um, some pockets to some of these spreads. I don't wanna hide this. I want this to be intact, this little um, sewing machine. Um, the front, I feel like um, I might want to add this sticker to in some way so that it's really cute and um, it's got that little dress form on it. I think I'm going to put that there. So, kind of cute. It matches. Matches really well, actually. And then I have a blue thimble. Is there anything that I can use a blue thimble with? feel like the blue thimble might be a little out of place in this one. Um, I do have some more of these embellishments. This is another thing I could tuck. Um, this is the China doll dress form, which I might want to tuck in something, so I don't want to fasten it to anything. I might actually use that for paper dolls. Um, we have a little dress here. She's very colorful, though. I don't know if I want to add that just yet. We have a sewing machine um, that I have not used, so that's something. And I also have other things. I have these little women sewing. I have, um, you know, pictures and things like that. So let's see. I have stickers. I don't know that many of those are going to work for this. I do have these papers. I have this this grouping of women and I have some sewing packets here. So let's pull these down. Um, I like these little ladies off of the patterns. So let's pull this off and see what we've got. Um, she's sassy, isn't she? I kind of like this. It's kind of almost a Victorian theme I kind of want, um, she's pretty. She's a little bit too big for this. I kind of want this to be a Victorian type woman. So I think she's the right color palette. Um, we have this little lady and she actually mirrors this. So she could be a pocket. Um, Hmm. 
actually really like her on this page. So I think I'm gonna make her a pocket. I am, of course, going to um, ink the outside. And I'm, I honestly, I don't want to stamp through her um, or punch through her head. I may make this a pocket, a side pocket. So I think I'm going to punch in the middle here like this and make it a side pocket um, that you can tuck into. All right. Anybody have any um, links to cheap finger uh, daubers? Definitely leave those below because <laughs> I'm, I'm on the struggle bus when I'm doing this with paper. It's different when you're doing it with like cardboard or um, um, card stock or anything that's thicker, but the paper, it seems to want to just give and give whenever I do the ink. So I am definitely looking for those. Um, I'm sure I could probably search for them on Amazon and find them in a heartbeat, but if you've bought them and you've bought them cheap, let me know where you've bought them. Uh, it could be that, you know, that's something I might find with a 40% off coupon at um, Michael's or something. So let me know if you have. Um, I might go on a shopping spree again. I've got a couple more hauls that I've already uploaded and I'm getting ready to release. You guys are gonna, <laughs> you're gonna freak out when you see some of the stuff that I found. Okay, so I'm gonna glue this pocket sideways because I don't want her to be sideways. Um, and honestly, it would have been better if the pocket had been the other way, but I'm, I'm doing what I'm able to do with the shapes that I'm given here. Okay. I've got the edge glued very messily. I think I'm going to give myself some space here. Look how cute. Little pocket. And um, what else do we want to do? We do have this little, um, this little piece that probably would work better with another page like this page. It could go into this pocket, possibly. Um, okay. I also feel like I should have a belly band somewhere. I don't want to cover, I really just don't want to cover anything on this page because it's such a pretty page um, with that sewing machine, but something should go on it. So, let me see what I have. I don't want to do anything that is too, um, too 3D, like this little corset that, that arrived in the package because, um, you know, it, I feel like it's going to smush it, but I mean, will it smush it? Actually, I think it might work perfectly. Let's see. I'm going to do it. And if it doesn't work, I can always pull it up before it dries. I think it'll work. It's definitely going to need some um, pressure, though. Okay, so we'll put that there. I may even put a little um, a little tuck spot here in the corner. So I could do a little tuck right here for a card. Um, I don't necessarily want it to be this paper though. I think I will stick with this paper that has the writing like in the back background or this one because this is what goes with the page. I'll do um, I'll do that. And since it's on the front, I don't want to staple it. So it's gonna be another thing that I feel like I have to glue. I'm gonna glue. Just 
just on the edge here in an L. And then I am going to press down and wipe up with my finger any part that needs to needs to be and then there I have a little tuck I have to let it dry but I have a little tuck and I'm going to use my scissors to trim the extra a cute little tuck and it blends in I probably should have inked it I might do that once it's glued down ink it a little bit or you know what I'll ink it now um, what I'll do is I'll just stick this underneath and ink the edge very carefully You know, it's amazing what you learn to do, and I know this is off camera, um, how you learn to problem solve. So there's me a little tuck spot, and I have inked the edge so you can kind of see it there. Very cute. And I don't want to do anything to that page. I want to leave that. Um, this page, definitely, I can put some things on. I think I may try to trim this now that I am... Good and glued here. Okay, and I do need to glue something in the back of that because I don't like seeing the, um, the blue. It doesn't really go with my theme here. So, I do have this that I could glue, and I might mark maybe just below it so that I can cut my paper. So that I'm not having to waste paper down in the middle of that pocket. I think I'll put this on the back instead of on the bottom of the envelope. And there we go. Okay, that's better. Um, and then of course I'll ink the edges here. All right, so this, uh, this video is getting a little bit long, so I will do a part three. And as always, happy crafting.